Hey there people, so today I am bringing you my Terraria All Bosses in Order guide. This video will include both a slideshow guide and video of the actual boss fights. So first of all, I'll be running through the main boss order progression, how to summon them, important drops, and any conditions for each fight. I'll then also talk about event bosses and bosses that are not included in current updated versions of the game. After that, I'll have a compilation of each main game expert mode boss fight in order of progression with music over the top. These are taken from my expert boss guide series, which I recommend if you need more information on any bosses. Main bosses are in the order that you would generally fight them. There can be exceptions, which is also roughly easiest to hardest. I am not including fight videos for the non-essential event bosses or obsolete bosses. There will be timestamps in the description, so you can skip ahead to whatever you want to see. And it's worth noting that the slides will mostly have the boss in the middle, a picture of them, so you know what they look like. Useful or unique drops in the bottom left, and expert exclusive drops, if applicable, in the bottom right. I'll explain summoning items, including crafting recipes, where applicable, but those will not be on the slides, because it would just be too cluttered. Likewise, not all of the drops will be included, not even all of the good weapons will be included on the slides, uh, just the most important and unique items dropped by each boss will be covered. So, first of all, pre-hard mode, this is of course the early part of the game, that's what pre-hard mode means. Uh, King Slime can appear randomly, you may or may not ever fight him, but he can be the first one that you fight and is probably the easiest. He is summoned by killing 150 slimes during a slime rain, or by crafting the slime crown. So to make a slime crown, if you need to, it's a gold or platinum crown, which is made by five gold or platinum bars and one ruby at an anvil. You take that and you combine it with 20 gel at a demon or crimson altar to make it into a slime crown instead of a gold or platinum crown. On old gen consoles and 3DS, you'll need 30 bars instead of five bars to craft the original crown and then 99 gel to turn it into a slime crown. Um, useful unique drops include the slimy saddle, incredibly useful mount throughout uh, a lot of the game against other bosses and so on. And also the expert treasure bag includes the royal gel. The Eye of Cthulhu, uh, this one you will definitely fight. You pretty well have to fight the Eye of Cthulhu. Uh, so you may fight it before King Slime, but you may or may not. But uh, it will spawn randomly after you have reached 200 health points until you've defeated it, which is why you'll have to fight it. Once you've hit 200 health points, it's a one in three chance each night that it will come and get you. <laughs> and you'll have to fight it, uh, or you can, of course, manually summon it as well. It can only be fought at night which in game time is between 7.30 p.m. until 4.30 a.m. You can also manually summon it using a suspicious looking eye, which you can find in lots of underground golden chests, or you can craft it from five lenses at a demon or crimson altar. Uh, the Eye of Cthulhu is a good source of demonite or crimtain ore early on, and in Expert you also get the Shield of Cthulhu, which is actually pretty useful in certain situations. Now the Eater of Worlds, uh, this is technically a skippable boss in theory, but um, it is summoned in the corruption for every third shadow orb that you break using a hammer or explosives. It can also be summoned by using the worm food, which is 30 vile power powder and uh, 15 rotten chunks at a demon altar. Uh, you make vile powder from vile mushrooms at a potion crafting station. Uh, the Eater of Worlds drops Demonite Ore and Shadow Scales. Shadow Scales are important in crafting certain items from Demonite Ore, so you can't uh, just get away with the Eye of Cthulhu. And in Expert, the Eater of Worlds drops the tremendously useful Worm Scarf item. In Crimson Worlds, instead, you'll fight the Brain of Cthulhu. So Corruption Worlds, you get the Eater of Worlds. Crimson Worlds, you get the Brain of Cthulhu. So Brain of Cthulhu is summoned in the Crimson for every third Crimson Heart that you break using a hammer or explosives. Uh, again, you can theoretically, you, there are ways to skip this boss, but uh, it is useful. It's also summoned by using the Bloody Spine, which is 30 Vicious Powder, likewise crafted from Vicious Mushrooms, uh, or bought from the Dryad. Uh, plus 15 vertebrae at a crimson altar. 30 vicious powder, 15 vertebrae. 
Crimson Altar. On old gen consoles and 3DS, you will not uh, need the Vicious Powder. You will only need the Vertebrae. The Vicious Powder doesn't exist on those non-updated platforms. Um, Brain of Cthulhu drops Crimtain ore and tissue samples. Again, tissue samples necessary. So again, you can't get away with just the uh, Eye of Cthulhu. The expert treasure bag includes the Brain of C Confusion, um, which is not quite as useful as the Worm Scarf. The queen bee, uh, summoned by destroying the larva that you will find inside hive. So you break into the hive, you find a larva, kill or smash the larva, and uh, you get the queen bee. Um, so you'll find those hives in the underground jungle, the larva likewise. Uh, in fact, the queen bee must be, sumble, must be summoned in the jungle biome. The other way of summoning the queen bee is by using the abomination summoning item, which is crafted from five honey blocks, one stinger, five hive blocks, and one bottled honey uh, anywhere in the jungle. On 3DS, uniquely, you also need to add three crispy honey blocks and two obsidian to that crafting recipe, and you need to craft it at a demon and crimson altar, uh, demon or crimson altar. So um, on other platforms, you can craft the item anywhere, 3DS, demon or crimson altar. Um, so the Queen Bee drops actually a lot of useful stuff. She drops bee weapons and bee nades, which are very powerful throughout pre-hard mode until you get into hard mode. Uh, rarely she will drop the honey goggles, which give you the uh, bee mount, which actually is a way of flying in pre-hard mode, although it's limited flight. And she also drops beeswax, which is very important uh, for early game summoners. In expert mode, she drops the hive pack, which amplifies the effectiveness of the bee weapons. Then you have Skeletron. So uh, Skeletron is actually pretty easy in normal mode, a lot harder in expert. So you could fight this earlier in normal, but um, I recommend using bee weapons in expert. Uh, Skeletron must be summoned and fought at night, which again is 7.30 p.m. until 4.30 a.m. He is summoned by cursing the old man at the dungeon entrance or, uh, much more rarely, by using the Clothier Voodoo Doll. After you've de defeated Skeletron, you get the Clothier NPC. If you're lucky enough, because it's a very rare drop to get the Clothier Voodoo Doll, then you can use that to basically kill the Clothier and fight Skeletron again. Um, and again, that has to be at night. Defeating Skeletron allows access to the dungeon, which is the major reason that you'll be fighting Skeletron, to get into the dungeon without being slaughtered by the Dungeon Guardian. Uh, Skeletron can also drop the Book of Skulls, and in expert mode drops the Bone Glove. Now the Wall of Flesh, the final boss of pre-hard mode, is summoned in the Underworld, aka Hell, by throwing a Guide Voodoo Doll into the lava. So you'll get those from uh, flying demons that are carrying voodoo dolls in their legs. Be very careful you don't kill one above lava. It might fall in and the wall of flesh can come to get you. Uh, the guide NPC must be alive for that guide voodoo doll to work. So uh, if your guide NPC has died, build a house and he should respawn. As long as you have a valid NPC house, your guide should respawn and therefore you can use that voodoo doll to summon the wall of flesh. And you can summon it as many times as you like with those voodoo dolls. It's actually very useful to uh, farm the wall of flesh. Defeating the wall of flesh will change your world to a hard mode world. So that's where pre-hard mode becomes hard mode. Your world actually changes when you defeat the wall of flesh. Uh, hard mode includes new enemies, new loot, and so on. It's basically a whole new version of the game, so to speak, uh, by defeating the wall of flesh. So Wall of Flesh drops the Pwn Hammer, which is important um, later on in hard mode, potentially at least. Uh, also drops some good weapons, some powerful emblem accessories, and in expert mode drops the expert demon heart, uh, which gives you an extra accessory slot important for expert mode. So once you get into hard mode, uh, and once you use that Pwn Hammer to destroy one of those altars, you're going to be fighting the three mechanical bosses. The easiest, in my opinion, uh, you can fight these in any order, and you may fight them in any order, uh, this one and the other two, can appear any night after you've destroyed at least one demon or crimson altar once you got into hard mode. So that's what the Pwn Hammer is for. You can destroy the altars. Um, I caution you on that. You might want to check out my hard mode guide, but uh, it, it explains the consequences of doing that. Uh, but once you've destroyed one of them, 
Uh, any of the three mechanical bosses can appear any night. I believe it's a... Yeah, actually, I don't recall offhand. It might be a 1 in 20 chance each or something like that. But anyway, you're, you're likely to be fighting them because there are three of them and they each have a chance to spawn each night after you've destroyed one of those altars. Uh, the destroyer can also be summoned at night using a mechanical worm, which if you have not defeated... Uh, the destroyer yet you can rarely get that dropped by enemies enemies will drop that until you have defeated the destroyer you can also craft the mechanical worm from six rotten chunks or six vertebrae plus five iron or lead bars plus six souls of night at a mithril or orichalcum anvil so once you're in hard mode you need to craft a new anvil from mithril or orichalcum to do certain things and that's one of them uh, the destroyer drops souls of might Hallowed Bars, and in Expert Mode, drops the Mechanical Wagon Piece, which is one of the three components for the Mechanical Cart. One piece for each of the three Mechanical Bosses. Skeletron Prime, one of the other Mechanical Bosses, again, can appear any night after you've destroyed at least one Demon or Crimson Altar, once you're in Hard Mode, or uh, can also be summoned using a Mechanical Skull, which likewise is rarely dropped by enemies if you have not defeated Skeletron Prime yet. Uh, and the Mechanical Skull can be crafted from 30 bones, 5 iron or lead bars, and th plus 3 souls of night and 3 souls of light. Add again your Mithril or Calcum Anvil. Uh, Skeletron Prime drops souls of fright, hallowed bars, and in expert mode the Mechanical Battery piece for the Mechanical Cart. The Twins, the third and last of the uh, three mechanical bosses. Again, you can fight them in any order, uh, and they likewise can appear any night after you have destroyed at least one Demon or Crimson Altar. I would say, personally, especially an expert, they're the hardest of the three. Um, twins can also be summoned at night using a mechanical eye. Likewise, a rare drop from enemies if you have not yet defeated the Twins. And by the way, there's a lot of debate which one's harder between the three. Um, the mechanical eye can be crafted from three lenses, five iron or lead bars, and six souls of light at your mithril or calcum anvil. Uh, the twins drop souls of sight, hallowed bars, all three uh, mechanical bosses drop hallowed bars, and in expert mode, the mechanical wheel piece is dropped by the twins for the mechanical cart. So once you've defeated all three in expert mode, you can craft the mechanical cart. Next boss after the mechanical bosses is Plantera. Uh, Plantera is uh, summoned by destroying one of her pink bulbs in the underground jungle. Those Plantera bulbs will start growing after you have defeated all three mechanical bosses. Uh, they can grow very slowly. Basically, they grow one at a time and there's a delay between each one. So it might take you a while to find your first bulb. Eventually, they're going to be kind of here and there all over the underground jungle, but it can take some time before you're going to find one. Uh, defeating Plantera causes harder enemies to spawn in the dungeon and makes new dungeon loot available. Plus, uh, your cyborg NPC can arrive after you've defeated Plantera if you have a house for him. New gear will be dropped by other uh, NPCs, or uh, sorry, you can buy new gear from other NPC characters. Uh, there are new solar eclipse enemies that spawn when a solar eclipse occurs after defeating Plantera. And defeating Plantera also slows the spread of the evils and the hallow. The corruption, crimson, and hallow will spread more slowly after you defeat a Plantera. Uh, Plantera also drops the temple key to get into the jungle temple. Yes, there are ways to get in sooner, uh, but officially that's the you know only after you defeated Blandera and uh, she also drops several useful weapons which I'm not showing here uh, in expert mode she also drops the spore sack and um, also there are a bunch of things that are important for summoners after you've defeated Blandera uh, but let's not get into that in detail I've got a guide for that if you want more information next boss after Blandera is Golem uh, which again, once you get into the jungle temple, Golem is the boss of the jungle temple. So uh, he is summoned by using a lizard power cell at the lizard altar found in the jungle temple. Now, you don't select your power cell, you put it in your inventory and you just uh, use your like open door button on the altar itself while the power cell is in your inventory. There's your tip. Uh, the power cells are found in the jungle temple and uh, Golem, although there are tricks to get into the jungle temple before defeating Plantera, again, you only get the key after defeating Plantera, and Golem can only be summoned after you've defeated Plantera. 
Uh, on the update of platforms, defeating Golem causes the cultist to spawn at the dungeon entrance, and Martian probes can begin spawning as well. Uh, so updated platforms, there's a couple things uh, for progression that only happen after you defeat a Golem. Golem drops powerful weapons and accessories, and the expert treasure bag includes the shiny stone item. Now Duke Fishron... Um, you can fight Duke Fishron anytime in hard mode. This is just where I would put him in the difficulty. Uh, most people would fight him after defeating Golem, at least. He can be summoned anytime in hard mode by casting a fishing rod into the ocean with a truffle worm as bait. Uh, the truffle worm you will f try to catch in an underground mushroom biome. Uh, you need a bug net. In order to catch the truffle worm, they're difficult to catch, difficult to spot. Uh, but again, you actually put the truffle, truffle worm in your inventory, and then you just cast your uh, fishing rod into the ocean. And uh, once you see it bobbing, you pull up, pull back your rod, pull back the line, and Duke Fishron will be spawned. Now, uh, Duke Fishron again is an actually an optional boss. You don't necessarily need to fight Duke Fishron, but he drops some powerful stuff. He can drop the Fishron wings, which are great wings. Uh, he also drops powerful weapons. Several powerful weapons can be dropped by him. And uh, in expert mode, he drops the shrimpy truffle item, which summons the cute Fishron mount, uh, which if you know what you're doing, is a very powerful mount. It's uh, particularly powerful with uh, water or uh, bubble blocks. Uh, but again, there's a guide on that. You can you can get the details there. Uh, so on the updated platforms only, there are three additional sort of bosses or, you know, well, one of them's an event, but let's get to that. Uh, updated only the rest of uh, these regular bosses, the rest of the progression. The Lunatic Cultist. So um, again, the Cultist will only appear at the jungle, uh, or sorry, at the dungeon <laughs> entrance after you have defeated uh, Golem. So... There will be four cultists that spawn outside the dungeon entrance after you've defeated Golem if you're on the updated platforms. And if you haven't destroyed your dungeon entrance, that's important as well. Uh, if they're not spawning and you are on an updated one, you might want to try to recreate a flat surface where the dungeon entrance floor originally was. It has to be the same height. Um, but the lunatic cultist drops the ancient manipulator, which is necessary for crafting late game and game items uh, currently the lunatic cultist does not have an expert drop the lunar pillars technically this is the lunar or celestial events and they're sort of mini bosses of uh, the lunar events but they are necessary for progression so i'm including them in the main line here so to speak uh, again likewise on the updated platforms they appear automatically after you've defeated the lunatic cultist and uh, there are four of them, one matching each of the four major character classes in Terraria. So uh, the Stardust for Summoners, Nebula for Magic, uh, Vortex for Ranged, and Solar for Melee. And the enemies that you will find around them match those four in terms of their attack styles and so on as well. Each of the Lunar Pillars drops its own type of fragments. So I kind of put the little icons of those next to them. So there's Stardust Fragments, Nebula Fragments, Vortex Fragments, Solar Fragments. And those fragments are used to craft powerful weapons, uh, other gear, and eventually armor. Uh, the armor you can only craft after you've also defeated the Moon Lord. You need the fragments plus um, something the Moon Lord drops. So let's talk about him. Moon Lord, currently the final boss in Terraria, appears automatically after you've defeated all four of the pillars and can also be summoned using a Celestial Sigil, which is crafted from the fragments that you get from the pillars. You'll need a good number of them. Uh, so probably if you don't beat Moon Lord the first time, you might need to run through that event multiple times, the Lunar Events, um, to fight him again and or to get enough fragments to craft the summoning item to summon him again. Uh, Moon Lord drops generally the most powerful weapons in the game, a whole bunch of them. I did put those on the slide just to show you. Uh, also drops Luminite, which is necessary for the endgame armor and various other things. So basically, if you want to craft your endgame armor, you need Luminite from the Moon Lord and fragments from uh, the pillar corresponding to whichever class armor you want to craft. 
Uh, Moon Lord's expert treasure bag is unique that it contains two items, both the gravity globe and the suspicious looking tentacle. Gravity globe manipulates gravity, obviously. It's sort of like a gravitation potion, has some slight differences. Uh, suspicious looking tentacle is a pet, which will also help you find treasure. So that's all the main game bosses, but let's uh, also talk about event bosses. So um, I'm not going to show gameplay for these in the gameplay boss fight thing after this, but uh, Pirate Invasion includes the Flying Dutchman mini boss, which is a giant pirate ship complete with cannons. It drops the same items as other Pirate Invasion enemies, but at higher drop rates. So there are some nice things you can get from it, but they're... Uh, the nicest things are very rare, like the coin gun. It's like a 0.25% chance of getting the, the coin gun. So, um, yeah, you, if you really want it. <laughs> the solar eclipse is also something that you'll probably run into automatically. Uh, Mothron is a mini boss that appears only on the updated platforms. Um, yeah, so these, these two events, Pirate Invasion, Solar Eclipse, can appear on all of the platforms, uh, update or non update but uh, Mothron itself only appears, herself only appears on the updated platforms after you've defeated all three mechanical bosses. Mothron can drop the Broken Hero Sword, and also after you've defeated Blantera, has a couple more drops, including the Mothron Wings and the Eye of Cthulhu Yo-Yo. Now, the Old One's Army is an event uh, which is only on the completely updated platforms, uh, 1.3.3. I believe that was originally released so currently it's not yet on um, Switch or on mobile although it will be coming to those platforms it's currently PC, uh, PS4, Xbox One uh, but the Dark Mage is the first mini boss that you will encounter during the Old Ones Army the Tier 1 earliest version of the event there are three tiers or versions of the Old Ones Army depending where you are in the game. Dark Mage is the first mini boss. Uh, doesn't really drop a lot of useful items. He drops a couple of pet items, uh, which are sort of interesting, but that's about it. The Ogre first appears during the final wave of the Tier 2 version of the event. Like the Dark Mage appears during the final wave of the Tier 1 version. Um, and the Ogre also appears more frequently in Tier 3, as the Dark Mage also appears more frequently in later versions of the event. The Ogre drops several useful weapons and sentry boosting accessories, but nothing terribly, terribly important unless you're playing a sentry based summoner. Uh, Betsy only appears during the final wave of the Tier 3 version of the event, basically the ultimate boss of the Old Ones Army event in the later stages of Terraria. Betsy can drop wings and some powerful weapons, including Betsy's Wrath, which is the only one I've put on the slide there. Uh, Betsy's Wrath inflicts a very powerful debuff, so it is definitely worth having and using. Uh, the Pumpkin Moon is another event. It's an optional event. The Headless Horseman is uh, sort of a mini boss during the Pumpkin Moon. Doesn't really drop anything uh, too interesting, except that is where I got my little uh, pumpkin helmet thing, <laughs> vanity item, um, but really doesn't drop anything too useful. Morning Wood is another mini boss during the Pumpkin Moon event. Uh, most important drop from Morning Wood is probably the Necromantic Scroll, which is very important for summoners to get an extra summon. Uh, Pumpkin is the third and last most powerful uh, boss during the Pumpkin Moon event and drops several powerful weapons through a couple of those down there in the corner. Like the Pumpkin Moon, the Frost Moon is another optional event which is a little bit harder and has some more important drops. Everscream is uh, probably the first uh, and least of the mini bosses during that event, but drops the Razor Pine, which is a very powerful weapon for magic users. Uh, Santa NK1 is another Frost Moon mini boss, drops the Chain Gun. And the Ice Queen is sort of the ultimate Frost Moon uh, boss, which can she can drop the Snowman Cannon, the North Pole, the Blizzard Staff, rarely the Reindeer Bells. Um, among other things, of course, the, the reindeer bells are very, very rare, but summon the Rudolph Mount, which is, you know, sort of like almost a mythical fantasy thing because it's so rare. But anyway, uh, the Martian Madness, the Martian Saucer is sort of the mini boss of the Martian Madness. Martian Madness event is updated only. The Pumpkin Moon and Frost Moon are on all platforms, but Martian Saucer only on the updated platforms. Martian Saucer can drop several powerful weapons, uh, including the Xeno Staff, uh, very important for summoners. 
The laser drill is also dropped by the merchant saucer, the anti-gravity hook, and the cosmic car key, which is how you get the UFO mount. So there are a few uh, bosses that were actually cut from um, old console and mobile versions. So currently, actually, these a uh, couple of these only exist on 3DS. Lepus now only exists on 3DS and old mobile versions. If you did not get the update on mobile, you might still have Lepus. Uh, and the uh, Lepus appears and is summoned during the likewise exclusive Easter event. So uh, 3DS and the old mobile version had some exclusive seasonal events. There's an Easter event. Uh, Lepus is summoned using the suspicious looking egg that you get during April, essentially, which is uh, the Easter event. Lepus can drop the Egg Cannon, Boots of Ostera, Ninja Set items, and rarely Souls of Might. Lepus does not exist, never existed on PC, never existed even on console. So now only 3DS and the old version of the mobile uh, version of the game. Similarly, Turker the Ungrateful is a boss that is in the exclusive Thanksgiving seasonal event on those same platforms, 3DS and the old mobile version. Uh, so Thanksgiving event is in November. Must first, uh, you must first summon a pet turkey that there's like a turkey feather, I believe, uh, to summon the pet turkey. And then you use uh, cursed stuffing to summon the actual boss. So uh, the important thing about Turker the Ungrateful, Turker the Ungrateful drops the Horn of Plenty, which is essentially a 120 point healing potion that you can use continually forever. Uh, you do still have the delay of using a healing potion, so you just can't like spam heal, but um, it doesn't go away when you use it is the difference between it and a healing potion. Uh, so yeah, again, that's 3DS and the old mobile version exclusive does not exist, never existed on PC or console, and does not exist on the updated mobile version. Now, Okram, um, slightly different, does exist on old gen or pre-update console platforms as well as the old mobile version and on 3DS. So um, Okram never existed on PC, does not exist since uh, console and mobile platforms that were updated. Uh, but exists on old gen and non-updated console as well as the old mobile version and 3DS. So he's considered one of the final bosses in those versions where he does exist, along with Golem and Duke Fishron. Uh, Okram is summoned using a suspicious looking skull at night in hard mode, drops adamantite ore along with uh, the exclusive souls of blight, which also only exist on those versions, spectral arrows, which also only exist on those versions, and armor pieces that only exist on those versions. So uh, you can use those souls of blight likewise to craft other armor pieces to complete your set. So there's like three sets um, of armor that only exist on those platforms, dragon armor, uh, spectral armor, and titan armor. And so that's it. That's all of the bosses. And uh, so next will be, it's boss fight time. It's time. Uh, so this is just going to be a video of all the boss fights set to music. And I hope you like it. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you next time. Um, enjoy the boss fight.
Yeah. Mm. 